Hello everyone, this is JJ DeLille with RFEMX and today I'm going to be assembling a TEM cell by TechBox, which is distributed by Salig uh, in the United States. And what a TEM cell is a, a TM, a transverse electromagnetic cell, which is essentially a microwave strip line that you use to uh, contain the electromotive force in, uh, from say a generator or actually from a, a DUT, a device on your chest that you place inside the strip line cavity of the TEM cell um, that'll actually allow you to do one of two things. You can either generate signals into, uh, highly directed into that particular DUT, or you can actually receive signals from it much more selectively than you could with say um, general probes or, or uh, a large scale antenna, uh, specifically for a desktop scenario. Obviously with uh, EMC pre-compliance or compliance measurements, you're going to want to use a compliant antenna system, but this is something that's very, very useful in the EMC pre-compliance um, that you can do in a very, very small lab area. You can see the assembly is very simple, uh, very simple construction, very easy to use, low component count, low cost, um, especially compared to setting up an anechoic chamber or other grounding layers. So that's what the TEM cell does. It helps contain the RF energy inside the cell itself. Um, one side terminates in a dummy load, the other side can terminate in a signal analyzer or a signal generator, depends on what kind of testing, if you're doing um, radiate immunity or if you're doing radiate emissions testing. So. Um, again, all of this equipment came as a kit from the tech box that we got through, say, like the U.S. distributor. And we're just going to do a really quick and easy assembly. Um, now, this is a loaner unit that I have today, so uh, I'm not going to completely remove some of the uh, plastic protective coating on some of the mirror polish steel metal that's the outer casing of the TEM cell. I'm not going to remove that uh, because I have to ship this back to them, obviously, but I'm going to do my best job of keeping everything in pristine condition as well. Um, but fortunately, all the assembly tools and everything we need uh, came contained, with the exception of some cleaning material, which we'll use, obviously, high percentage isopropyl alcohol, which you can pick up at um, any electronics uh, distributor that contains things like that or Amazon or any other um, tool or resource and ideally you would use a cloth that doesn't uh, have fibers that pull off very easily um, there's a variety of different cloths that you can use to do that obviously this one's not a hundred percent ideal so I'll probably go back over this with a few wipes but right now I'm just trying to get the adhesive off the TEM cell um, sides here this is a, again this is the outer coating so you'll see that I pulled back some of the, the adhesive uh, protective, um, I guess this is to protect from rust and tarnish and everything during shipping because these originally came from overseas in Asia, um, which is probably one of the reasons why they're as inexpensive as they are, um, but very uh, good quality, robust metal technology. You can see that this is pulling up some of the ink from uh, the dye that's used on the um, adhesive coating so protect it, that protective layer. So I'm trying to pull those out of the way as best I can so I can put them back later. But now I'm going to use some alcohol wipes that don't peel off as effectively to finish up that cleaning job on these edges. And the reason we're doing this is because we want to maintain uh, high quality ground contact with the edges, the grounding edges of the TEM cell, but we also want to have a really good contact with the screws that are binding everything as well. So that's why we want to clean it and make sure that it's actually pretty pretty pristine, um, no fiber, no dust. Now that's a little bit challenging because uh, the, the metal was formed and the coating, this protective film coating, which is adhesive, was put on and then these drill holes were done. So these are actually, they have a little bit of um, scabbing up at the top. They're a little rough here, so it's going to pull any fibers off um, your pad. So what I'm even going to do is I'm going to go another step, and I'm going to wipe these off with a, a cloth, which is like a cleaning cloth or glasses and things like that, so that hopefully will help remove the majority of the fibers and help enhance that ground contact. So we'll go ahead and do that until these are clean, and this is probably honestly the most complicated step out of all of this, and, and depending on how um, particularly you are about the quality of your measurements. Some people might not go um, to this level of cleaning and this level of effort. Um, this is not something you're excited about. You can skip you know, forward from this part of the video to something a little bit more interesting. But this assembly is very straightforward for this very simple mechanical 
assembly, not um, nothing to, to calibrate. You just want to make sure everything is well connected, well attached. Um, so you have very low resistant ground contacts. And we'll do a couple of quick measurements um, to perform that as well. So I'm going to get some of this out of the way um, as I continue the measurement or continue the assembly. There'll be measurements later, which will be very exciting. So these will certainly come in handy. So this is a terminating dummy load. It's a 25 watt dummy load up to three gigahertz, um, which means after that it doesn't terminate as effectively. So this is really useful for that EMC. Um, this is a DC block, which is another necessary component. And we'll show that as part of the uh, assembly and connection to a spectrum analyzer once we get underway. So these are the two outer um, shielding for the TEM cell. And you can see that they'll mate like this around that strip line center portion. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use that last alcohol pad, I'm actually going to clean that strip line center portion's um, ground contacts. So just let me get to that very quickly. And I'm going to be careful again as I hold this because um, I'm not going to keep this one to return it, so I want to have it in as pristine condition as possible. But I'm just cleaning it. Now this is very smooth. This is plated afterward. Um, after these holes were drilled, so it's a bit easier to clean as well. And you can see, again, this assembly is going to be very, very simple. Um, you have to be careful not to bang anything. And again, normally you would remove this film before you would do the assembly. But for the sake of returning it in its pristine condition, I won't be doing that. But in essence, from here, we just put in these little. Um, screws and nuts these fixtures now these have spring washers on them and that's to help maintain the connection and they have it on both sides it's important to have that solidly connected on both sides so we'll go ahead and just have a few of these to the side as i get all of these together for the assembly and obviously it won't fully insert until it, everything's perfectly aligned. To figure out that it's perfectly aligned, I have to make sure they all fully insert. So, and again, I'm making sure that there's a spring washer on every side. Now, I believe they include an extra, they include five of these, even though there's four attachment holes. So in case you lose one or damage one or one's not fit, then you'll always be able to use that spare, which is a nice addition. It's very thoughtful. So again, it's just a matter of kind of jimmying everything until all of the uh, screws are inserted. Now, some dust from what I imagine the steel drilling kind of came out on either side. Um, now, if I were going to make sure that this was as um, good an install as possible. Honestly, I would probably put effort into having made sure to clean inside all of the holes prior to assembly. Um, we're not doing any, gonna, we're only gonna be doing demonstration work, so I'm not going to clean that as rigorously as I would um, if I were doing a complete test setup, but that's something that you probably wanna do if you were if you wanted to have as high quality setup as possible, along with obviously moving the film and, and a few other key things. So I'm just hand tightening these a little bit just so, just so that they're, they're firm as well. I'm trying to get this in the viewfinder. The assembly again is pretty, pretty straightforward. Just spring washers attached, as well as the nuts. It's not too not too hard, everything threads easily, decent quality, nuts and bolts, I believe. The nuts and bolts are also plated um, as well, which is nice, so this will have some nice corrosion resistance over time. And then again, the just the tightening step, which these supply little wrenches make this very, very straightforward. And again, this you don't have to tighten this like you would on an automobile, it's not going to be that rigorous, just enough to depress the uh, spring probes and make sure there's a good connection there as well. And it's convenient, again, that they include these little wrenches, which are, seem to be 
decent quality. Excellent. Actually, that's an important thing to note is that any mechanical damage to the strip line or the internal surface here, you can see it's actually really well polished, um, which is nice. And the, and the reason that is is to keep as pristine uh, surface quality as possible. Now, is that such a huge issue up to three gigahertz? Well, um, it depends again on the quality of the measurements you're seeking. Plating is really nice. The polishing on this is really nice. These are really important not to damage, so being careful with the wrenches is good. I left the caps on the RF connectors attached to ensure that I wouldn't damage them while assembling, but that is essentially it. Again, and if I had this um, film off, it would be very nice polished steel on the assembly. Now, this portion, you can see, is very straightforward. Easy assembly. These are easy to pull off. You just pluck them off. These are end connectors. Now something we're going to do is I'm going to get a ohm meter out and yes I have a relatively old school analog ohm meter for this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to ensure that this is properly adjusted. It looks pretty good. Adjusted. I want to make sure and actually the reason I'm using clamps to set up like a uh, hard pro is actually don't want to damage the end connector in there, but I do want to touch it very gently and touch the outside and make sure there's no connection between the center conductor and the outer conductor of the RF connector there. Um, that would be a bad sign and, and would make things inoperable and can even damage equipment if you're attached. So it's always something good to Ensure, but you don't also don't want to put a lot of pressure. You just want to gently touch that center conductor. All right, it looks like we are not uh, connected on the center pin, but the outer grounding seems to be reasonably well connected to the RF shielding. Um, very low contact resistance. Probably most of the contact resistance is with the ohmmeter itself. Um, but it's a very straightforward, simple test that we did to confirm that we're not going to damage our equipment when we attach it to the TEM cell. Now what we need to do on either of these is on one side attach the dummy load and this is going to be the side that we don't put, obviously we don't put the um, spectrum analyzer connection with or the signal generator connection with and I'm holding this sturdy while I screw this in to ensure that I don't damage the center conductor by twisting the body of this. Now I would if again I were doing a pristine setup, I'd have a torque wrench that would do it to the end torque spec. Alrighty, and once we had the dummy load all set in there, um, again good to three gigahertz. See the attachment there? We installed the DC block in a very, very similar way. This is good to six gigahertz, which would protect most signal analyzers that, that you would use for EMC. You're probably not going to go that far. Um, but yeah, essentially that is the assembly. You would just connect the signal generator or uh, signal analyzer. Um, or CM EMC analyzer to this end of the connection and you'd have the device like this and size in the DUT just like that. Um, now something important about the DUT size is that it, it'd be significantly smaller than the placard, internal placard to the TEM cell, especially the outer placard to the TEM cell. It can't be um, any larger than this. Uh, the larger it is, uh, the poorer the RF performance of the TEM cell, the smaller it is, the better. And you can also see that this outside uh, portion it's open which essentially is a waveguide and obviously the larger the TEM cell the larger the DUT you can have but obviously you get more interference and, and ingress of wireless signals and RF signals that come in um, the smaller uh, obviously a smaller waveguide you get less ingress however you can only have um, a much smaller proportionally smaller DUT and that's science but with that we're done <laughs>